What does school climate mean to you? Uh, I think it is the temperature of the school. <laughs> what does school climate mean to you? It's the environment in the school and like how everybody acts around in the school setting. What does school climate mean to you? Solid brisk, 55 degrees. What does school climate mean to you? Uh, I think it's just the way the students act in school. What does school climate mean to you? School climate means a lot to me because it's like the vibe in the school. What does school climate mean to you? It means you're going to, like this time of the year, you're going to be seeing a lot of the females looking cute wearing their sundresses and all. And the dudes is going to be wearing the muscle tees, you feel like trying to show off the guns that they probably don't have. What does school climate mean to you? School climate is like the character, character of the school, you know? What does school climate mean to you? School climate? It's just the way the school is, feel me? Like the vibe, the, you know, the energy, though. You feel me? Like, I keep the same energy, you feel me? Hi, I'm James White. I'm here with Mr. Bubman. Hey, James. What's up? What is school climate? Uh, school climate is the overall feeling of uh, just what the school is like with the relationships between, um, you know, students with each other, students and teachers, teachers and teachers, administration and teachers, everybody. Why is school climate important to you? You know, school climate is important because, you know, for you guys especially, you, you have to enjoy coming here. You know, there has to be something about your day that you like because if you don't then you're not going to want to come here so school climate is important because if it's a good school climate you're going to want to spend some time in school and you know do some work and, and interview teachers that you know you want to talk to yeah right hi i'm james white and i'm here with mrs Ritondi. hi james white what does school climate mean to you so school climate in my opinion is uh the environment in which we work um it has to do with the staff the students the administration and just how we interact with one another why is it important to you oh i mean if you're unhappy coming to work or coming to school every day that's gonna you know put a big damper on your life um we spend many many hours here you know interacting with one another so i think it's important that we all kind of get along Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Hi, I'm James White. I'm here with Mr. LaRusso. How are you? What does school climate mean to you? Um, school climate means a lot to me. It means people feeling comfortable in school and wanting to be here. Why is it important? Um, it's important just for that reason. Kids want to be here. If they want to be here, then they want to learn. And if they want to learn, they're going to be contributing members to society. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm James White, and I'm here with Mrs. Kamak. Hello. What is school climate? School climate, I think, is the attitude of the building, how the teachers and students interact with each other, and hopefully any school has a positive feel as you walk through the halls. Why is that important? Well, it makes people want to come every day, you know? Kids especially waking up early in the morning, like to know they're going someplace where they're going to feel good about what they're doing and good about who they're going to spend their day with. 
All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tom McKee, and I'm here with Ms. Farnsworth. Ms. Farnsworth, uh, I got a few questions about school climate, and answer the best you can. Uh, what is school climate? It's like the environment in the school, how happy or sad everyone is. And why is school climate such an important thing nowadays? Well, I think it's important because we want everyone to want to come to school and feel safe and be happy. So in order for that to happen, we have to make sure that they feel welcome and comfortable. Thank you for your time, Ms. Farnsworth. Tom again. I'm here today to talk to the principals of Kingsburg High School, Principal Ms. Vaccarelli, Vice Principal Mr. O'Keefe. Our discussion today will address school climate and how it affects our environment in our high schools. We will open the floor to our principals. Hi, how are you? Hi guys, good morning. Good morning. We're really honored to be here uh, to have this conversation today about school climate and culture and I guess what it means to Mr. O'Keefe and myself. Yeah, and so it's really an honor to be able to have this opportunity to speak uh, with you guys and answer questions and allow that message to get out to the community and our students. For us, it's always about creating a professional environment for those who work here and a safe environment for you guys so the teachers can then impress on you how much they care and how hard they're working for your uh, emotional well-being, social well-being, and uh, academic and physical well-being. So. Right. Yeah, so the first thing that we think about when, when it comes to school climate is you know it, it's a trickle down effect right so you know Mr. O'Keefe and I we walk in here every day and when we walk in we want people to feel a positive energy a positive vibe um, something that's that also feels safe and comfortable to our staff and students so we know that our demeanor our attitude our energy is going to trickle down right so then we have that you know what, we, what we're so passionate about is what Mr. O'Keefe just said, creating a safe, um, positive, rigorous, comfortable, um, nurturing environment for not only our students, but for our staff as well. Because then you guys are walking into the classrooms every day. So whatever is going on with your teachers, that is going to then trickle down on you. So, so we have a few here, students trying to do. Given the recent violent events, which have turned our school students, please feel free to add in or have, have happened in schools, do you feel safe in our schools? Uh, but this is something, every single decision that we make, everything that happens in this school, you guys don't see a lot, but the safety and security of our students and staff is the biggest factor in all of those decisions. Now, we talk about model behavior. Mr. Neese really models great behavior for, for his team. Ms. V and I, we embrace the way he rolls, and there are, and Ms. V said there's a lot of things happening, a lot of positive things happening. Yeah. Um, so there are, we have listened to students, we have listened to parents, and we are putting steps in place. There's two ways to approach this. There's preventative or proactive, and then there's reactive, both of which help for the greater good of your client and culture. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that. I don't, I don't have any I mean, the only thing I would have an issue with is like, you can see like during the drills and stuff, how like, some students don't like take them seriously, mm -hmm. and it's like I don't like I don't feel safe when we have a drill and there's like a kid like standing up in front of the class or right. talking out loud or like on their phone and stuff. So yeah. that is such. So I can, yeah. So like, yeah. Liam, this is this is this is such a great example, right? What you just said, how it makes you feel unsafe when other students don't take these drills seriously. These we do these drills for a very distinctive reason, so that we are prepared. We are prepared when, you know, statistically, I mean, we I read articles about this all the time. Um, if there is someone that comes into our school that wants to infringe violence upon us, um, this, the, the point of doors being closed, we, you don't have to have a, the biggest barrier on a door to be safe. It's about what shade down, it's a deterrent. Someone's not gonna walk into a classroom where they don't hear a peep, they don't see a light, they don't see any action. They're gonna, like, their eye's gonna go to, oh, like I can see someone's cell phone on the floor or I can hear people laughing in this classroom. There, That's where I'm gonna go. That The, the deterrent of being caught, it's so important. And that's why Mr. O'Keefe and I even have implemented it. Students that do not act accordingly during drills, there is a, now a code of conduct. They get an actual consequence for that. More severe Because of the, the severity of the situation. We talk yeah. about stakeholders. Stakeholders are all people have a vested interest in a process or the community. You guys are stakeholders. We often talk about never being just a bystander. 
but to be an upstander, someone who imposes positive will on each other. So in a moment of a drill, we don't want to get into an argument with kid with each other, but you want to consistently impose positive nature and will on kids, and it will become infectious. So the nicer you are to people and the more you hold your friends accountable, in a way that's not confrontational, but a way that's humanistic, you guys will feel great about yourselves. It will demand that that other person reflect on, on good behavior. Miss V and I will- down The trickle down effect. So we are on point with it, Liam, and uh, that's why we took the steps last year to put those pieces in the, mm -hmm. in the book. If there was a drill and there was somebody in our school that wanted to like, a violent act, all of us being in a corner, they're not gonna walk around school, oh, nobody's here today. They just all took off. No, 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 so that's, they're not but, gonna do that. But just because they walk into this quiet classroom and next door somebody's giggling, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that person's giggling because if I was, if I walked into the school and I, I wanted to act violence, I would know that kids, there's probably a kid in every single classroom. Quiet or not, silent or not, in a corner or not, hiding or not, I know there's kids in this classroom. Right, but, but what's gonna happen is, right, so the second something that goes, so we're very lucky. We have a, an armed police officer in our building, right? That's here, and we have, you know, the the, K, the Keensburg Police Department within like literally thirty seconds of this building. So it's about yes, hiding yourself and being out of the of harm's way because help is on the way and and it will be immediate. It's about taking those precautionary measures for the couple of minutes of absolute terror that we would have to experience, because help will be here in a second. Officer Serrano is here. So yes, you are deterring if you're hiding and off or whatever. That's going to, that is essentially will save lives. Trust me when I tell you. Key word right there, trust. I promise you this, we, we react instantly and we treat it all very seriously. Safety is yeah. first It's priority. about keeping yourself safe because help is coming. That's a definite, and, and it may take you know a minute, 30 seconds to a minute to get here, but that 30 seconds to a minute where you're hiding and out of sight and completely quiet is what will save your life. Because One other question I would ask together, and then students, please, faculty as well. Do you feel comfortable with your teacher-student relationship, faculty relationships here at Keensburg? I mean, I definitely do. I think since it was such a small school, it really helps. And like all the all of the teachers, even some I've never had, everybody knows me. It's, it's great because we have all these personal relationships, and I love it. Do you feel that we hold you, the greater student body, do we hold you accountable enough? I want to put it back on you. Now, teachers are not here to befriend you; they're here to keep you safe and help you learn. Do you feel we're doing our job as faculty in helping you feel safe? You said I do, but I want feel, to embellish on that. Feel that we're holding you to high expectations. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so, and especially as like, once I came in as a freshman, and I know maybe everybody can speak on this, it was it was a weird experience, like it, was, it always is, but now that I'm a junior, we're getting closer to college, I think all the teachers are really putting that on us, and, and like, I think the guidance did a great thing, like when the SATs were the registration date before spring break, trying to get everybody in there and get ready because we really don't have that much time left, and it's really coming, it's yep. getting close. So, and I think everybody did a great job holding them. Anyone else? Yeah, I, think, I, oh, yeah, I agree with Stephen with that, um, and how you can tell that all the teachers do care about us and that they want to put our uh, needs first before everyone. I think we're held accountable, but I don't think we're college ready. Okay. At all, 110%. Why? I think that we're we're held to a certain point where if you're not going to do it, then it's not going to get done. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to ask you to do it. But nothing. I feel that right now today, if I walked into like Rowan and I had to write a research paper in 60 minutes. Maybe this is just me. I feel like I I just feel that I would be college ready. I feel that I'm not college ready. Right. Do like this school hold me to really high expectations because I've shown very high ambition and effort. And now I'm kind of struggling with it because like now I'm just, like, they're really challenging me but the, now we know you can do is now you have to do. So it's really just all about like, kind of what you take out of it, like what you put in things where you're going to be out of it. Right, so if you're not going to, right, so college ready. So if you don't do an assignment in college, there's no second chance opportunity. There's no, you know, oh, you can hand it in late. It's you have a zero and now you're held accountable. If you're not, if a student is not putting in the effort and not making sure that they are getting the education that they are so entitled to, 
yes, like we are here to support and you know there are so many counseling components in place like students that completely withdraw from their education. There's got to be a bigger reason. So we work with those students. But a student like you who is a very good student does their work, there's no way that you're not going to be ready for college. It's because your effort, your mindset, and what you put into everything you do is is the answer. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. Because I was like that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bowl, like he, remember that class, like we were struggling in that class, but because of that class, I wanted to learn. I came every day to Mr. Bowl's class and I put the effort in there, and now I got a lot out of that class. It's now <laughs> So all have varying potential, good, bad, or indifferent, right? So it's our job to recognize your individual greatness, to push you beyond that greatness. We call it a zone of proximal development. We're going to push you always outside of your comfort zone. Not, we're never going to. We never strive to give you a break to let, let you off easy. We want to push you forward enough to where it feels uncomfortable, but where you feel confident you can still continue to learn. The minute you step in college, Stella, you're going to find something new you have to learn. It's not a break. No, it's... So tying it back to climate culture, if we're doing our job and kids are safe and they're feeling that we're all being held accountable and to similar standards, the culture is in play to allow you to be great. A different outcome but everyone will walk out of here happy and for having felt challenged and confident in their in the next step. Just one final question before we get to some closing thoughts. Like, this is such a big issue about bullying, like how students, how you feel seeing around the school, or just the issue of bullying in general, how the students feel, and what do you think we could do as a school to improve? All right, so the word bully and bullying is a very, uh, it has a word that has a lot of meaning. There's a lot that goes on here with drama between students. At all schools. Yeah, at, at all schools, school. right? Yeah. yeah. What? It's, like it's high school. school, exactly. So a lot of times, you know, um, bullying and conflict are, are confused and the words are used interchangeably, but they're really not interchangeable. Um, but we spend so much time behind the scenes, again, things that you don't see, with being able to truly define what is bullying and what is not, and then working with the students who are subjected to any of that kind of behavior. Um, at the end of the day, you know, our hope is always that kids, that you guys are going to treat each other with respect. Even if you don't like someone, you will have the ability to coexist with them in our environment because we're here to learn and to play sports and have fun and, and you know feel good about ourselves. Unfortunately, there is sometimes a breakdown in that and we have to deal with those situations. But with the bullying, um, and it starts with modeling the behavior that we expect from our students, right? And when we run into these situations where there, there are either conflict or students treating each other poorly, it's not just about issuing a consequence. There is a whole bunch of things that we do behind the scenes where we have trained professionals working with these students because a student that is doing something ex dis uh, displaying very poor behavior, there's all there's a reason why. Search on the internet. Look up the poem by Dorothy Nolte. And she was a uh, she wrote this in the 50s, and it's entitled "Children um, Live as They Children Learn as They Live." Right? And I give this poem out to the staff every year in early in yeah. the first couple of days, and basically it talks about how you are treated in life is the way you will exude in life. And, you know, we, we really, again, it's about model behavior. There's a, a, a great educator from back in the day, his name's John Dewey, you can look him up as well. He talked about schools should emulate society. You know, in a perfect world, we want to model exactly what's happening in, in society and embellish and, and raise the bar. But we know, in a town that I love dear to my heart, where I grew up, we know that we, we have some struggles, right? So we're a blue collar town and we embrace that, we love that. So we have to look to see where there might be uh, gaps or in, inefficiencies outside of the school and we then look to that, we look to fill the gaps, make you guys feel whole and loved and ready to conquer the world. And that's the bullying piece yeah. into that story. Even like a small, like a very small thing. So since I've been here, this is, you know, I'm in my third year, there, I, I've conducted my own little experiment, right? So when I first got here, I would walk down the hallway, either in between classes or just when I'm going to, you know, do my walk around the building, um, and a student is walking, you know, in the opposite direction. And when I first got here, one of the things I noticed is that the students would 
literally walk by me with their head down and, and not you know make eye contact or say hello or or maybe have the expectation that I was going to say hello to them right so I conducted this own little experiment myself where I decided that you know I'm going to make it a point one to learn just about everyone's name here which I'm still working on it and two um, no matter whether I know someone's <coughs> name or not when I walk into the lunchroom when I'm walking down the hall I'm going to have eye contact and say hello to, to, to students and I want to see you know how they react first and then if it catches on so now in my third year here students that have been here for a little bit I've noticed a big difference in my you know sophomores juniors and seniors than I do in the in the incoming freshmen where you know I say hello to everyone I give a high five I give a pound I walk in the lunchroom I have conversations I you know walk in class I give somebody you know a wave just that eye contact I notice now you guys responding to that you guys looking at me maybe in the hall and saying hello first which makes me really happy um, and now the freshmen are starting to catch on like like at first some of them may think oh my god Miss V is so weird why is she saying hi to me and, and you know it's, but this is how we should be in life you know we should say hello to people you never know with making eye contact with someone and just giving a smile or saying hello how that could change someone's day from down here to up here because everyone deserves to feel valued and important and everybody deserves you know to have a smile and to feel good about themselves I think that the whole like how you live is how you are is not true at all. Like I think it's all about like um, subjectivism. Like nobody's born with like a moral standard. It's all about what you think is right or wrong. Like what I think is right could be what Lish thinks is wrong. It's all about who you are as a person. So I know plenty of people who grow up in probably the worst lives. Mm -hmm. Their parents don't talk to them. They they don't care what they do, and they could be like valedictorian. Yeah. So yes. all these people who are I mean to this person because. My mommy and daddy don't talk to me at home. I feel so bad for people who have tribal homeless, I really do. But I feel that it's no excuse for you to be mean to others. And I feel like it's no excuse to watch teachers watch things happen. And there's very few teachers who speak up and watch bullying not happen. Like, there are a lot of things that your teachers report behind the scenes that you have no idea. Conversations that happen in our offices with Mr. O'Keefe and I, um, with staff, that you have no idea. So. You may not see certain things, but you you know it's it's hard to assume. I also 100% agree with you. I don't think it's teachers like like I know that teachers like might not make a scene about it and they might treat you an email after class. But I'm saying that mm -hmm. all of these little things that happen they might not be viewed as being bullying, but to that other person like. Like you might think that the bully has a bad home life, but the mm -hmm. other, maybe the person that's the victim that one thing that someone could have said that was a joke really could have. One hundred percent. So we we so I and so I say this to speak kids up, or people like me and Demi speak up. We're looked at as yeah. even worse people so right. than so what a bully wait, would be viewed as. So I a hundred percent agree with you. There is there is no justification for treating pe people poorly. I don't. You have a horrible life. That stinks, but that does not give you justification. And, and I say this to kids in my office yeah. every single day, right? That's all we talk about. That's all we talk about. Your crappy situation does not justify your poor treatment of other people. So my, my last comment to that is, Kingsburg doesn't stand alone with this issue. Um, this is a, there is oh, no school district on the school. planet yeah. mm -hmm. that, that doesn't deal with helping kids learn to socialize and treat others that they want to be treated. The last thing that I'll say, is I want to get it in, is the topic of apathy. Having grown up here my whole life, right? Having three kids your age now, have you ever felt that you can see your goals, but you just don't believe that you can get them? Ever felt you can't reach a goal? Mm -hmm. That's apathy. That, so when Ms. V and I, if we can have you graduating with confidence and being happy, confidence and having learned and met all the graduation requirements, we can begin to remove apathy in a community. We do not want you floating with your head down in a hallway. We want to see a pep in your step. Have Ms. V and I ever walked through a hall where we're not, you know, pep? You know, it's model behavior. That's the point coming here. <laughs> it's, it will never end because this place taught me that and, miss, and high school experience for Miss V as well. We talk every morning on the way to work at 6.30 a.m. Um, because that's really a good time for us to have a conversation because once we get here we are we do spend a lot of time dividing and conquering um, because of you know things just we are pulled in a lot of directions so um, you know this place 
the outcome of our students, the well-being of our students, the safety of our students, uh, the general attitude of our students, the vibe of our building, the, the energy that's in here, it's, you know, it is something that we eat and sleep every single day. Between, like, you guys do a great job communicating with staff members, and I think it really helps, but I think there should be more communication, you know, like with a small group of kids, like every, every month, every two months, whenever you have time, just to talk to the kids, because we see more than the staff members this we is a feel great more to make that. Yeah, so even if we more than the staff members feel or, or we know what goes on more than you guys think goes on you know and i think that would maybe make a big difference but in the following year the year after so why don't you so so I you know mr o'keefe and i have an open door policy so we we have students that come in to talk to us all the time sometimes you know things have if we're dealing with things they have to come back but you know like a principal's council for students you know, we would be very open to having some, a forum where students create a club that like every, you know, every once a month, we're meeting at two, from two to 2.30 with students that want to be there. So we would, but we, we would be happy to do that. You guys create that and come to us and we will, we will be there even if you want to do it for the rest of this year. So, um, absolutely. Well, as we're coming to an end, any students, principal, do you have any final thoughts or that's a conflict thing. Like, when there's conflict between, like, two students or something, we just get put in an office and, like, try to get it worked out, but just say sorry and then go over with our day. Just because we said sorry or anything doesn't make it okay for the other person. So we, um, right. Jasmine, we identify as mental health professionals in the building, and <coughs> we work together to identify whether or not students need counseling, and we hand it off to professionals that can handle the next step. So that's that's not entirely accurate. So we definitely bring you guys yeah. in, so, we mediate, and then we counsel continue. And we also have so many resources available for students that need it. With our we have school based, which is such a phenomenal resource. I'm not sure if any of you mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. go back there, but it's such a phenomenal <clears throat> um, program that we're so lucky that we get this grant to have those counselors here. Um, we also you know have our guidance counselors, our child study team. So. We do have a lot in place, and there's not ever a time where if we have to mediate something that there's not a follow-up, um, you know, and, and you guys also have to be willing to be I'm participating in that. Yeah. I'm it's, sympathetic yeah. for you guys at the same time, because no matter how much counseling, how much you talk to kids, it's, it's within, it it's within the kids, it's within the stop. person itself. You have to make the yeah. decision yourself, no matter how much you guys try. And like Jess said, it is hard. Like, like if me, Jasmine, got in an argument and I said sorry, but I didn't mean it, it's, it's not your fault. It's and not here, Jasmine's fault. Here's what I'll tell you to that. You said you always try. Guarantee to our grave. We will never stop trying. Right. Ever. And this, this was really an honor awesome. um, to be here today with you guys um, and Mr. Iorio. You guys did a great job. Uh, we love the tough questions and we will continue to do this. You guys kind of are the catalyst for, for you know, what this can be, be turn into. A principal's council for students, something with student council, Demi. So you guys, you know, bring that to us and we, we will be there. Um, but we are really proud uh, to be here and I really am so passionate about what we do here and about the impact that you guys will have on this world. You all have so much to offer and uh, you know, it's really, really very, very proud of you guys and I'm looking forward to see all the great things that you move on to do because I know that it's going to be uh, next level. It takes a village, and you are all part of the process. So yeah. do your part, and I promise you we'll do our part. Yeah, thank you.